Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to create a sort of organic pattern and then go and stretch and bend it in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. Now, a viewer has sent me a link to this particular image and the image has a sort of pattern in it that is distorted and they asked me how they could achieve something that is a similar effect. We're going to do that in this video. We're going to do it by firstly creating the sort of pattern and then we're going to warp it. So I'm just going to tuck it out of the way. We're not going to reproduce this exactly, but I'm going to show you the basics of creating that effect. I'm going to choose File and then New. And I'm just creating a 600 by 600 pixel image RGB color mode. I'll just click OK. Now I want to add a background to this, so I'm just going to create a rectangle the size of the artboard. I'm just going to click here and click here, and let's fill this rectangle here with an orange color and no stroke. And over here in the layers panel, I'm actually going to lock that because I don't want it to move as I work. And I'm going to click here to add a brand new layer, and we're going to work on this new layer. Now I want to create an ellipse, so I'll click here and click the ellipse tool. I'm just going to drag out an ellipse and let's fill that with white so we can actually see it. Now we're having trouble seeing the outlines of this ellipse because this current layer is using a red outline. Now we can change that by just double clicking here on this layer and that opens the layer options dialog and for this we can actually change the color of the outline. I'm just going to make this medium blue. And now everything on this layer will be outlined in medium blue, which is going to make things a little bit easier to see. I'm going to click on the direct selection tool because I want to select this particular point here, just this one at the very bottom. And I want to make it pointy, so I'm going to click here to convert the selected anchor point to a corner point, and that just makes it pointy at the bottom. Up here with this particular anchor point, I just want to flatten it a little bit, so I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to make sure it's still centered across the top of the shape, but it is dragged down. And the next thing I want to do is to bring these sides in. Now, there's one handle here and there's one handle here. So I'm going to click on one of these handles, this one here, and I'm going to shift click on this one. So both these handles are now selected. Now if I drag, you can see that both handles are moving together. I'm just going to undo that. Because I don't want these two handles to move in the same direction, what I want them to do is to move in the opposing direction. So with them both selected, I'm going to click here and select the Scale tool. And now when I drag on one handle, you can see that the other one goes in the opposite direction. So I can scale this shape. So for example, I can make it a pointier shape. And that's what I wanted to do there. I'm just going to shorten this a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that as my starter shape. Now I need two of these, so I'm going to select over this one and I'm going to duplicate and flip the next one. I can do this any number of ways, but the easiest way for me right now is just to hold down the Alt or Option key and just drag a duplicate away. And now I'm going to rotate it, holding the Shift key as I rotate so that my rotations are constrained to multiples of 15 degrees. Now I'm just going to place this shape in position because I want to sort of make a pigeon pair here. And these two shapes are going to be the beginnings of my pattern. So I'm going to select over these two shapes and now let's create a pattern from these shapes. So first of all, I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform because that will allow me to create multiples of this shape. Now I think that this is a bit big before I start, so I'm just going to cancel out of here and let's just make this shape a whole lot smaller because I'm not going to be able to get enough in here. So again, Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. Now I'm going to turn Preview on so I can see what's happening and what I want to do is to start moving these in a horizontal direction. So I'm just going to move them and I want them to be sort of a pair and a little bit separate from the other one. So I want an uneven spacing here. So I've sort of got my horizontal movement and now I'm going to increase my number of copies. I'm actually going to extend this one beyond the edge of the artboard, but that's just fine. I'll click OK. 
if I were to rescale down this particular shape, you'll see that everything rescales automatically. Because what we've got really is just this shape that has been transformed multiple times. So let's go and grab this shape again and let's transform this in a vertical direction. So Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. And we're asked if we want to apply another instance of this effect, which of course we do. Let's click Apply New Effect. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, turn Preview on, but this time we're going to increase the vertical instead of the horizontal. We're going to do that until we move this pattern away from the original pattern. And we want a number of copies of it, so I'm just going to increase the copies. Well, I've increased it to 10. We could increase it a little bit further. We're still way off the artboard, but that doesn't really matter. So once I've got this sort of repeating pattern looking pretty much the way I want it to look, I'm just going to click OK. Basically what I've got right now is these two shapes and they are transformed a number of times. So to make these individual shapes, I'm going to choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And you'll see in here that we end up with heaps and heaps of groups. And so with these still selected, I'm going to start ungrouping them. And I'm going to do that until there are no groups left here. And so we only have paths. And so each one of these paths is one of these little shapes. Now that I've got all of them isolated just to the paths, and I've got them all still selected, I'm going to group them just as a single group. So now I have one group with all these paths in it. Just a whole lot neater. Now when I move the group, all the shapes will go with it. The final step of this is to actually warp this to have that sort of warp effect. And so with this group selected, I'm going to choose Object and then Envelope Distort and I'm going to choose Make with Mesh. When I do that, I get this dialog which allows me to create a number of rows and columns and this is the warp mesh that I'm going to use. So I'll be able to do more with my shape if I have perhaps more rows and columns. So I'm just going to choose 6 and 6 and click OK. Now this warp mesh behaves very much the same way as shapes do in Illustrator. So we can go and get the direct selection tool here and we can go and grab any one of these points by just clicking on it and then drag up or down. And when we do that, you can see that we're distorting this shape. And that's really the basics of just creating that pattern as we saw in this window here. It's a case of pulling and pushing this shape until you get an interesting organic effect. So I'm just going to grab two of these this time, click on the first, shift click on the second, and now as I drag up you can see I'm affecting both of these. And I can grab individual anchor points and adjust the handles on those anchor points to get the effect that I'm looking for. And with a bit of work in pushing and pulling this shape to where you want it to be, you can create those sorts of waves through this pattern. Making sure that you're working with the direct selection tool so you can click on a single handle or select multiple handles at a time so that you can work with multiple points on this curve. As you drag, you'll see that the pattern actually changes as it moves. And of course, you can move vertically, move these vertical grid points, as well as adjusting the horizontal grid points. So I'm just going to have a little play around with this, and I'm going to come back when I've got an interesting warp effect.
I've now finished with this particular design and you can say that it has now some organic lines running through it. If you want more organic lines running through it, then you would need to add more rows and columns in the initial warp. But now you can see the basics of how the effect that we were looking at could be achieved. To finish off, I just want to neaten this up so that the only area that we're seeing is the area that is inside the artboard. So I'm going to go back to this particular layer here and I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to duplicate this rectangle. So I'm just going to click it here and that will make two rectangle shapes and I'm going to take one of them and put it above the envelope warp. I can lock back down layer one should I wish to. And now I'm going to select the two elements that are on layer two. That's the overall orange rectangle that is the same size as the artboard and the envelope warped shape. And I'm going to create a clipping mask. So all I need to do is to choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And what Illustrator is going to do when I select this is to hide all the bits of the envelope warp that lie outside this orange rectangle. And because it's using the orange rectangle just as a clipping mask, the color is going to be dropped from it. So let's just click Make. And there we have our orange pattern shape clipped to the artboard. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.